welcome back to Sextras. Where we talk about sex and all the extras. I'm Honey. And I'm Maria. And today we're gonna try to answer the question, should love be difficult? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we definitely won't have like a, any kind of concrete answer at Absolutely the end of it. Not. It will just sort of be a little conversation about like compromising yourself in relationships, like compromising in general. Yeah, expectations um changing yourself those kinds of things yeah we want to talk a bit about love languages as well Mm -hmm. which kind of comes under expectations but we will obviously get into it yeah what zone are you in this week this week i'm actually like in a pretty yellow zone like i'm excited it's spending i'm spending like the weekend with my boyfriend i have a time off work I'm going away, like, you know, things are looking bright and, like, the, s- the sun is coming out. The weather's, like, got- getting so much nicer here. So, you know, all good vibes, but I am I am really tired still. Like, I'm just really, really tired. So hopefully at the end of this little one-week break, I won't be coming at you with any more grey sh- gray zone stuff. My mum literally called me to complain that um, we're, we sound too tired and like too low energy in the episodes so hopefully today we'll bring in lots of energy sorry about that Maria <laughs> <laughs> um yeah no I'm in the grey zone this week <laughs> <laughs> yeah um but I did have my friend visit last mm-hmm. weekend so that was fun and then I called Maria and I was like, I have to be productive. Like, I haven't done anything. And then I got my period and since then, nothing's <laughs> happened. <laughs> just gone downhill. Yeah, that. it's just gone downhill. But we did get named one of the best oh, yeah. sex and relationship podcasts to listen to in 2022 by Cosmopolitan. So that was super exciting. Yeah, that was pretty crazy. Yeah, that was definitely the highlight of the week. Um, I also went to see the Fashioning Masculinities exhibition at the V&A. I would recommend for anyone who's interested in clothes or masculinity <laughs> as a whole. They, it was actually really cool. They talked about like body standards for men, like how clothing has been shaped around that and like gym culture. So yeah, quite relevant to the pod. Yeah, that sounds really interesting. Yeah. Um, but yeah, other than that, I'm just feeling super tired and I'm stressed about money, so (laughs) that's good. But yeah, anyway, let's get into the segment this week. Mm -hmm. Um, we started with a poll where we asked, do you think love should be difficult? 22% of people said relationships should be easy. 9% of people said relationships are hard work and 70% of people said some things are easy, some things are hard. I feel like... On the fence a little bit, yeah. Yeah, I feel like this like third option that they have given, that Instagram have given for polls now is like everyone always goes for the (laughs) middle, middle option. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, But I mean, we did have some stark relationships should be easy. Yeah. And then some stark relationships are hard yeah i was expecting like more people to say relationships are hard to be honest i was expecting like uh, the majority to be relationships should be easy to be honest oh really yeah i thought that or well maybe not the majority i did think the majority would sit on the fence but yeah like it would be higher like a lot higher on should be easy (laughs) that says a lot about who we are as people (laughs) that you were like nah people are gonna say it's easy and i'm like nah they're gonna say it's hard (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> no but it's not that like relationships should be hard but i would i did expect people to say that they are hard work mm. but anyway we'll get into that um what do you think if you had to answer the poll what would you say <laughs> i think some things are easy some things are hard and i was thinking about like the thing is, I do think that love should be easy. I don't think that it like it should be hard to be with someone. Mm-hmm. But I do think that there are a lot of things that are not within your control a lot of the time. Yeah. Like, you can't control how you're going to feel about certain things. And like, I don't know. I just feel like there's so many variations that is like, 
since feelings are involved, mm-hmm. like, yeah, there will come times where it will be hard. And, like, there yeah. will be times where, like, it will be painful and it will hurt. But, like, that's because, like, anything that you really put emotional investment into, like, has the potential to hurt you, really. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know. That's kind of very abstractly how I think about, like, I think about it. What about you? I think... For me, relationships are hard work because, like, of who I am. Like, I find it hard to, like, put myself into a relationship and, like, do the work to make it happen, you mm-hmm. know? So for me, it's hard work. But I don't think that means they should be. But I do think that, like, like obviously it's nice if relationships are easy, but I do think that's, like, a little bit of a unrealistic standard to have in a way like I do think you have to put work into your relationship and it doesn't mean it should be like hard work all the time but you do have to like put the time and do the like emotional work for yourself Mm. and like for the other person so yeah I don't know I am on the fence like some things are easy and some things are hard but you do need you need to put time you need to like nurture your relationships you know so yeah yeah and that goes for like all relationships not just romantic relationships like uh, last week's episode we talked about friendships I think friendships you know you have to put the time nurture them Mm -hmm. like make sure they are flourishing the way they should (laughs) yeah no it's true I mean yeah I think essentially I do think it has to be sort of a balance of both yeah I don't think that it should be like as hard as some like some relationships that people stay in yeah and they're like yeah but like relationships take work and you know that's just how it is but like maybe this just isn't your person and equally like I do feel like there's this idea that like you can you just go into a relationship and like everything's perfect and you just like know exactly like every every little thing is like you're basically like in sync and whatever Mm -hmm. like I don't think that's realistic either and everything will always be easy and blah 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 yeah 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 but we'll get into it we kind of want to talk about like how like this idea of romantic love and like things coming easily to you and like this idea of working on a relationship a bit more but let's finish the segment first okay and then we asked what aspects of yourself are you willing to compromise for a relationship because you know i feel like people talk about compromise as like a key feature of relationships Mm -hmm. like I don't think this that's like a brand new thing but it's like okay what is okay to actually compromise and what is okay to actually compromise on and what is okay to actually compromise about yourself yeah and like what is okay to ask other people to compromise yeah yeah yeah. like what expectations are okay to have Mm -hmm. um so some of the stuff that people said is someone said I won't compromise any part of myself when it comes to shared but when it comes to shared aspects there is wiggle room okay so maybe that's like like the house that you'd maybe move it is that yeah. like do you think that's in like tastes in things or like I guess I guess it's like when something affects both people in the relationship right. maybe that's how I take it but mm. I do think that that kind of does compromise yourself in a way like but obviously that depends how you look at relationships and I did like a little bit of reading and I'll read you some quotes from it because I thought they were quite useful um but yeah I don't know it it definitely depends how you look at it but like if you are doing something like a shared aspect will like realistically you're not gonna do it if like you don't like how it will affect you Mm. unless you're like the, the the most selfless person in the world and unless you've like been together years and years and years and it's like okay now I know that this is like the way things are or whatever I do think it's different for like different lengths of relationships yeah yeah yeah. but yeah um and then someone said everything (laughs) love that for you um yeah (laughs) i i mean i think that's also a a trap people can fall into in that like you are more into the idea of like being with someone essentially so you'll just like change everything Mm -hmm. so they'll like pick you kind of thing and I, i do feel like this happens like people all the time like 
especially like when you're younger and... yeah that's true like you're more moldable <laughs> when you're younger <laughs> <laughs> yeah um uh, okay and someone said lots of different things especially when it gets more serious and you get older places to live jobs in different cities it has to be compromised so you can be together in the long term okay yeah i get that but i do think there are people that like aren't willing to move city or whatever you know like it's a very personal thing i reckon mm -hmm. but obviously this is this person's like what they would compromise yeah <laughs> um and then someone said nothing fundamental about myself but things like what food to get okay yeah yeah. No, I will not budge on more food to get. <laughs> yeah, like little everyday things that will affect both of you, maybe like the first person you're yeah. saying. Mm -hmm. um, okay, and then the last one is I would compromise my fina my financial health. <laughs> Very interesting. <laughs> like, I want to know a bit of backstory to this. <laughs> like, it's like, you know. You'll, like, go out, you'll spend money on them. Like, right. you're expected to spend money on them and you're, like, okay with fulfilling that expectation, yeah, maybe. Yeah, I guess. And, like, if you're looking to buy a house together or whatever, or, like, you know, when you're in a relationship, like, if you live together, you, you share finances or maybe you have a joint bank account or mm. whatever. Like, I don't know. I've never had to deal with that, so... <laughs> <laughs> But definitely an interesting perspective. Um, okay, and then we asked what aspects of yourself you are not willing to compromise and what expectations do you know you need to have met in a relationship? Someone said, understanding I need my space sometimes or I won't last. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fair enough thing to like have a boundary on or mm -hmm. know that you won't be willing to compromise on uh someone else said strong communication yeah definitely For i mean sure. i don't think you can survive without <laughs> communication <laughs> yeah someone said morals personality values and standards yeah yeah I mean, the main core of like what makes you you i guess which is mm. obviously good <laughs> yeah we did do an episode about like if you can date someone with different like morals and opinions on like political issues mm. called will you take me as i am so go listen to that in season one um yeah next one someone said my career my hobbies travel my friends and family and need for time alone mm -hmm. okay interesting mm -hmm. what are something that you're not willing to compromise on or know that is an expectation that you need met <laughs> i just expect people to be like liberal people who are like pro-choice who you know have the same like political opinions as me because like that's important to me there are certain things that are like more willing that I'm more willing to budge on like you don't have to be a vegetarian that's fine with me but you have to care about the planet you know <laughs> but my family are like obsessed with the fact that I will only date vegans and I'm like I don't I really don't care I don't care but yeah um <laughs> and I need like quality time one of my love languages I need people to like you know spend time with me and like put in the same amount of effort that I do mm -hmm. otherwise I cannot deal with it but yeah that's pretty much it I wouldn't change my career for people I would move for someone probably not right now but like in future um yeah what about you what am I something that I'm not willing to compromise on? yeah or like what expectations you need met for sure I mean we'll obviously get into it but just like a little a summary a summary because this was Maria's Maria I feel like you can tell which episodes we come up with because like <laughs> this is Maria's one because she's in a relationship and she has things to say and I'm just like hypothetically I think this <laughs> or like in your experiences you can do yeah exactly you know? exactly that is why i was just touching on in case that no one got that <laughs> um 
Okay, I don't know, you know, like, I do feel like, I don't know, you know what? You're going to save it? it? We can get into it, yeah. Okay. And then to finish up the segment, we asked, have you ever changed yourself for a relationship? Someone said, unfortunately, yes, toxic people gaslight you over time and over time you become isolated from friends, etc. Definitely true, like you can just lose sight of yourself in a way and like now having been through like the experiences that I've had I would never like not spend time with my friends and family for someone I'm in a relationship with but if you haven't like gone through that or even if you have like sometimes it's just like you get stuck in this place where you just forget who you are and like that I do find that in relationships which is why I find them hard work that I just kind of like forget my standards a little bit Mm. and like don't like I find it hard to like connect with who I am which is why having friends around me and like family that care about me is like so important because it just kind of grounds you a little bit Mm -hmm. okay yeah and then someone else said yep many times I often to put up with their awful friends but also being open to trying new things Mm. Would you date someone if you hated their friends? Mm, probably. I mean, depends the reason why I hated their friends. And depends, like, how much time I have to spend time with them. Because yeah. you don't really need to see... Like, I wouldn't really ever need to see them. Yeah, but I guess. But if they were, like, really awful and, like... You know, like, really bad stuff. Like, they were mm. sexist and shit and that was like because it's like then it just makes me question like okay well what stuff are you saying like behind closed doors yeah that's true like when i'm not there that's so weird (laughs) and what if you get married as well like you would have to spend time with them surely but not really at the wedding yeah the wedding okay (laughs) one night i can do with them one night i don't know i probably would if they were really awful then no Mm. but like if I just didn't like them then yeah fine what about you if I really hated them I don't think I could date the person (laughs) but (laughs) yeah I guess you don't really have to see them ever if I if I didn't have to see them but it depends on the kind of person they are because I would want to be friends with their friends is the thing yeah I don't know and it depends like if if the reason I can't put up with their friends is like when we're and when we're like around them when they're around them they're like different and stuff Mm -hmm. I wouldn't deal with that like I don't like like shape-shifting kind of yeah nah no not for me not for me I like this whole idea of like being open to trying new things because I think it's like important up to a certain extent to be open to stuff but like sometimes you do it too much and then you kind of do like Mm. compromise a bit of yourself you know yeah but I also I I did like that point that they made you know about being open to trying new things Mm -hmm. because I do feel like a lot of changes that I've made about myself or like in my life and whatever are like kind of related to my relationship yeah have been like positive changes and things that Mm -hmm. I'm like I like that obviously as you were saying things can like like get a bit carried away and like Mm -hmm. you really do lose yourself and it's kind of like oh like who even is this anymore so obviously Mm. like watch out for that as well (laughs) because you don't want to wake up and be like god who is that (laughs) Yeah, but I think relationships are, like, a place to be able to grow. And so I don't think you can necessarily make a judgment on certain things until you've tried them. Mm. So I get from that perspective. But also, like, because I think that our society is really obsessed with, like, pushing yourself to, like, be better all the time. So I think you can get obsessed with, like, always saying yes to things. And, like, yeah, that can provide loads of opportunities. But, like with me being like oh I'm gonna go on all these dates blah 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 and then like suddenly realizing actually I hate this you know like yeah you don't have to do things because it will push you like it's definitely good to grow but I think yeah it's all about balance obviously Mm. so yes um but thanks guys for sending your stories your opinions and 
yeah, if you want to keep getting involved, you know where to find us on all our social media, it will be in the description, so go check that out. Thank you so much to Manscaped for sponsoring Sextras. We're so, so happy to be partnering up with them, especially as they're helping men take control of their hygiene and their health. Because we know that they can very, very much neglect their grooming, very much neglect their hygiene. So they need all the help that they can get. Definitely. And Manscaped have sent us a whole load of products to help them Mm -hmm. along on their journey of self-love and kindness and smelling good. (laughs) Um, (laughs) So this is the performance package 4.0. It includes, most excitingly, the Lawnmower 4.0, which uses skin safe technology. It has a ceramic blade, which prevent any ingrown hairs, and it even has an LED light so you can kind of see what's going on down there. So, so helpful. Mm-hmm. And right after that, you can go in with the Crop Preserver, which is a ball deodorant, and the Crop Reviver, which is a ball toner. And these, again, are just gonna help with that redness, that irritation, those ingrown hairs. Mm-hmm prevent all of that from happening and have you smelling absolutely amazing exactly and then to make sure the men can smell how amazing they smell (laughs) you have the weed whacker which again uses that skin safe technology and it's a nose and ear hair trimmer and yeah just gets all of those little stray hairs out of there so you're not feeling irritated Mm -hmm. and wrap your perfectly groomed balls in these super soft anti-chafing boxes and yeah it just all comes in this little wash bag it's absolutely incredible so go to manscaped.com and use code sexus20 at checkout for 20% off and free shipping that's 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com with the code sexus20 go check check it out. out But yeah, let's get into the main episode. Let's do it. So, do you want to talk a little bit about, like, why you wanted to do this episode? (laughs) Not to put it all on you, (laughs) but I feel like you do have more to say, so. Well, I was kind of just thinking about this idea of... I've talked about it in the podcast before. I feel like we've talked about how I'm, like, a hopeless romantic and, like, I very, like before I sort of got into any relationships and even like sort of after my second relationship, I kind of was like holding on to this idea of like, you meet someone and like, everything's just like perfect and like you just fit together so well Mm -hmm. and like all of the expectations that you have and like all of the things that to you, like that's what being loved is like. Mm -hmm. And to them, like vice versa, you know, everything is in harmony, everything's perfect. And yeah, then it's like, yeah, love should be easy. Like if you're with the right person, like it should be so easy and Mm -hmm. so perfect and whatever. And then after like starting, like after doing the podcast for a bit and like having a lot of these conversations and like being in a relationship where I feel like it wasn't easy. It was like, it was hard. It was was hard and painful in that like I wasn't, necessarily being loved like in the way that I wanted to or I was like expecting too much of someone or for the many different reasons why love can be difficult um I was like oh well no like this whole idea of relationships being perfect and like there being a perfect person is bullshit and like relationships just are intrinsically like a lot of hard work and like you have to work at it to have a good relationship and like a healthy relationship is one that you're like working all the time for and all of this stuff right with keeping in mind like obviously there are you shouldn't be working this hard obviously that still that still can be the case (laughs) but I don't know and then I was kind of thinking like but but I do I don't think that that is necessarily like completely true anymore like I do feel like going back to my kind of kind of like previous idealization of it I do feel like that there is more truth to it than I kind of like had dismissed it for because Mm -hmm. I do I don't know like everyone has different love languages and everyone has different ways of like communicate 
communicating and everyone has different ways of like being loved and loving and even though I have learned so much that it's like even though to me this is how like you show love this is how I would show my love to my boyfriend and like when he doesn't do those things I'm like oh like he doesn't love me Mm -hmm. I've like learned that that is not the truth and it's just that like there is just a miscommunication in there somewhere yeah I do feel like the right person would sort of like know how to love you or would be willing to like learn that stuff whereas Mm. I feel like a lot of the time people get stuck in these situations and relationships like trying to change and work at something and compromise on something that that person is like never going to be able to do Mm -hmm. like that person is never going to show love in that way that person is never going to do these things and even if they do do those things it will be like at a great effort and at that point I'm like what's the point then just like go find someone that like actually can do those things yeah but then like that's where like all the difficulty comes in because obviously like you don't just pick and choose who you love like you just fall in love and it happens you know Mm -hmm. and like then it's like okay am I gonna work at this or like am I just gonna let this go and like obviously yeah not everyone's gonna be a perfect fit and that's just like you know a whole part of relationships like some things aren't always gonna work out and that's that sucks but I don't know I just I just found it quite interesting that it's like why does it have to be so polarized in that Mm -hmm. like it's either yeah there's a perfect person out there or no like you have to work really hard I just feel like both things kind of have to be a little bit true and the perfect relationship not that that exists would be one that is like both easy but you're also like working towards because anything really takes work like anything worth doing realistically yeah like I like the idea that the right person is someone who is willing to learn these things and willing to like go on this journey with you Mm. rather than being like so stubborn that they're not going to do the one thing that you know you need to be fulfilled in your relationship and then I think like a huge issue was with that as well that is not like so easy is that a lot of us like we don't really know what we want and like yeah. we don't really know how we want to be loved and, and we don't really know how we are like loving people yeah you know so that's what I mean by like uh, there's a lot of miscommunications because like like I'll be doing all this shit for my boyfriend and whatever and it's like oh like why is he not doing like if he wanted to he would yeah, you know? yeah. but it's like but he's doing all these other things that just look very different to like what I'm doing and like that's his way of saying I love you you know yeah and it's like but that's getting miscommunicated because yeah. like we're neither of us is like communicating that in a way that each of us understands yeah right? right like you're showing love in a way that you want to be loved rather than like how the other person wants to be loved yeah. so it seems like for one person it can seem like they're doing all this effort but actually it's not the right way to make that effort but it doesn't mean that that effort isn't valid you yeah. know it just means that you can't recognize that effort because it's not like how you want to be loved. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like half of the time we don't even know. Like, uh, sorry, what I was saying before. Like, we don't even know if we like how we want to be loved mm-hmm. or like what we're doing to show our love and what our expectations actually are and what we are capable of doing. Right. Like consistently for someone else, what mm-hmm. we are like willing to be doing. Because also, I think that that can be different things. Like, you could be like, oh yeah, like I'm willing to do this and like. I'd be down to do this and like open to do this for you or like change in this way or change this behavior Mm -hmm. but then it's like can you actually are you actually capable like is this something that you can actually do consistently yeah and I think on the other end of the spectrum like people can get so stuck with this idea that like oh relationships aren't meant to be easy like yeah you are meant to do like this work Mm. to make a relationship function but like to what extent yeah and you do just you like, do that like how long do you keep waiting for someone else to show you what you need for the relationship to continue like you can't just keep hoping it needs to be like an actionable thing that they can actually do and implement and sometimes they can't do that and that's really sad and you have to let that person go and I've been in that position or like you know my relationship has been like super hard and like it's not really for anyone's like anyone's fault it's just like the situation that you're in especially during the pandemic like there were things that were just out of your control you know and like 
you can't just be in a difficult relationship forever. <laughs> like, it has to have some, like, some balance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 100%. It can also be, like, you're putting in so much work that in the process you're, like, you're a different person. Like, you're, you've you given up, like, all what you, what you kind mm. of thought were your needs. And it's like, oh, no, no. Like, my needs can be this. Like, I don't yeah. want to throw... Actually, I won't name any names. But, like, recently I was having a conversation with someone and they were like oh yeah like when I was in this relationship I thought that like oh I was a super affectionate person but like they weren't really that into like affection so now I'm kind of like oh yeah like that's not really something that I need Mm. and it's kind of like that it that can be true that like someone shows you something that you don't necessarily that you thought you needed and you don't but it also shouldn't be like oh like if this person doesn't need it and like if they don't want it then that's fine I don't I don't need that either Mm -hmm. like I can I can just change that real quick you know I do feel like that is like a really big danger and also like thinking that it does take work and like you should be like compromising like so much yeah yeah exactly um sorry but read can you read us some yeah so well just kind of like related to that I was reading this page about love languages and it said learning your partner's love language should not be a chore and if it feels bad or overly difficult that could be a sign there are some underlying issues in your relationship that need to be addressed i just thought that like summed it up quite well basically let's like move on to love languages seeing as we're here now but we can come <laughs> back to like what we were just talking about <laughs> so love languages in case you guys don't know are the ways that we show love and the ways that we receive love in relationships and this can relate to romantic relationships friendships family whatever and like you can have different ones for different kinds of relationships there are five it's so uh, acts of service quality time gift giving words of affirmation and physical touch and they it was like they were labeled by a pastor in the 90s yeah isn't that quite cool and he did like counseling and he basically just observed in the counseling that he did that there were these like disparities in people's relationships of like there was a barrier of communication like what Mm -hmm. we were saying of like they couldn't understand why they felt like they were putting putting in all this effort and it wasn't being like recognized or received by the other person in the way they wanted it to Mm -hmm. so yeah it's quite a interesting like way to label things and it is just like a a theory it's not based on any solid like scientific research but there has been research since then that has like verified that it is a good way of measuring people's Mm -hmm. like ways of showing love basically so there's this quote from this study that I was reading and it says that encouraging people to engage in the ongoing practice of mastering and using the love language most preferred by their partner is a way of opening channels of communication but also stimulating an ongoing process of personal growth and expansion of the self in which partners develop under actualized qualities within themselves and integrate those into their existing personality so it's kind of this like idea of you don't realize something about yourself but by like learning how the other person wants to be loved and how you want to be loved you kind of can grow together Mm -hmm. and like develop your own like personality basically (laughs) I don't I don't have another word for it (laughs) so but I thought it was quite interesting this idea of like the perfect relationship needs to have like this selflessness to it in a way where like you are showing the other person something that they need in order to show them that you love them and like there's definitely a danger in that I think in that you can like do it too much and if it feels like a chore or whatever like I said before then that's kind of a sign that Mm -hmm. it's going wrong but like in the process of trying to learn how the other person feels your love you Mm -hmm. actually learn something about yourself and like you expand your potential for love and like for emotion emotional intelligence which is quite interesting like I think that's a really positive like way of looking at Mm. relationships instead of this like oh relationships are hard work or whatever it's like reframing the narrative of how you have these conversations about love basically Mm. and like how you put the time and effort into making it work yeah and then the guy who labeled the love languages 
says that like when a love language doesn't come naturally to the person it is a greater expression of love to for them to like show the other person and like I kind of wanted to talk about this because like (laughs) again I think there's this idea of compromise and like if someone does something that like they that isn't like innate to them or that they don't understand as love it's like a greater version of love and I think that's where this whole idea of like romantic movie like Disney love comes from is that someone's so selfless but then how do we measure that like boundary between Mm -hmm. like someone pushing themselves to do something that isn't innately who they are and like is that just an inevitable part of relationships like is that what a relationship should be well yeah I I feel like maybe in a way it is because I do feel like it is this it is a different, uh, like, I don't know, I guess in, relationships inherently are, like, one of the means by which we grow, like, mm-hmm. by, like, yeah, yeah. Ha- like sharing things with other people and, like, learning things from them and yeah, not even just romantic relationships, like, any kind of relationship, so yeah. I do feel like, uh, in a way, it does make sense mm-hmm. in that, like, yeah, it, like, it's such a it's such an act of love of like mm-hmm. you know this doesn't come naturally to me but like I know how important it is for you so I will do it for you mm-hmm. and like I don't think that that's a crazy expectation to have because that is like the expectation that I feel like I have in my relationships that like there are things that I'm like I can't like this is the way I see what a relationship is mm-hmm. and if like if you can't give me that like you have to be willing to compromise on it because otherwise yeah. like you're not showing me that you love me like yeah you're you're basically like like choosing to not do it in a way for me feels like a stance against loving you because it's like oh well I know that this is like what will make you happy and what you care about and whatever but I don't I'm not willing to do it Mm -hmm. um but as you were saying like where is that boundary drawn because I am also guilty of like going too far for someone that I love and like for a relationship and like yeah and also like not that I don't know I haven't like done a I don't I don't like look back and I'm like oh my god like I've changed myself so much but I do feel like yeah like how much is too much to ask for and how much is like not enough yeah Yeah, and I think that's where love languages come in really helpful because it's, like, this one way that I like to be loved that you can know, okay, so say my love language is physical touch. You know, if we can spend, like, five minutes every day holding hands or, like, cuddling, then I will be happy and I will feel loved. Mm. And that's not a lot to ask for. Yeah. Whereas, like, the other... Because you can have, like, a secondary love language, fine. That doesn't even need to be taken into account if, like, your primary love language is being met and accounted for. And then it can just be, like, a two-way street, you know? It's just, like, that one little thing that you can do every day or, like, whenever you can to, make the, to like, show up for the other person, mm. basically. And, like, learn... I think you can, like, learn your capacity for love through that because yeah. you can... Like, it's an actionable thing that you can do every day. And it's not, like, a difficult thing to ask most yeah. of the time. But then anything exceeding that is, like, that's where the questions come in. Because it's, like, what what is reasonable to ask of the other person if you are having your basic need for love met? Mm. And I think you can still feel unsatisfied in a relationship if... Like, even if you're having that one thing met. And that doesn't mean you're an unreasonable person, I don't think. (laughs) I think it's just, it's a situational thing and it changes in the relationship. Mm. But if it is something that's, like, a deal breaker for you, then that's that's that, you know? And I mean, I don't know, I do think maybe just sort of, like, identifying, like, that's, I do think identifying and sort of, like, communicating with your partner what you think you're love language might be and things like Mm -hmm. that like like it can be so helpful because not even in just like sort of what you were saying in that like this idea of like you can 
sort of prove your own capacity for love or Mm -hmm. like expand on that as well it's like it will just make your relationship a lot easier because I mean for instance like in a point of conflict like I'm I think my love language is words of affirmation and I didn't actually clock this but I've actually realized like how much I need words of affirmation and constant reassurance and that kind of thing and it's like if we have an argument and like maybe what I think I need is like to spend time together or whatever or like a hug sometimes like that won't fix it but like I I don't know I noticed this like really recently like there was um we had like a really weird sex moment I won't even get that much into it but I was feeling like really 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 insecure like after and like just not great but and we were like he's like oh like give me a cuddle and whatever and I still felt like really weird and we were kind of just like sitting in silence and then we kind of just like talked about it and he like said all like all these reassuring things and basically just like you know words of affirmation like reaffirming Mm -hmm. things and like I felt a lot better like immediately like I felt so much better so I just feel like that as a tool to also like be able to sort of like treat your partner with some kind of grace and like in the way Mm -hmm. that they kind of like need it yeah like and it because I think like also as as a partner like what you want is like to make it better or to like yeah. show your love and then if you're like oh okay but like I'm hugging you and like I came like to see all the way to see you and all of this stuff and it's like yeah but like you haven't you haven't said like yeah. I love you like five times in the last three minutes so like w- mm. what's going on here yeah you know and I feel like that can just clear a lot of things up because even if things can't be like oh this is so much more effort than I'm like putting in to show like my love Mm -hmm. is literally just changing one behavior to like swapping one behavior for another yeah a lot of the time that can be like a life change a game changer sort of thing yeah yeah definitely and I think like if you are not able to do that one thing I don't think you should like be with them you know because like in my last relationship um he was telling me that like he needed words of affirmation and like it really clicked for me when I was like I just can't give that to you you know like I just can't I don't I don't want to (laughs) and I was just like okay well we can't be together anymore because I just I know I can't give you that thing that you need and like maybe it could be different with someone else you know but like that was just something within me that was like no Mm. and I don't know what that was (laughs) like and I definitely obviously it goes without saying that your attachment style affects this. And, you know, there's, like, all of these external influences that can affect how you view someone else's attachment style and how you give love to people. Like, your upbringing obviously really affects that. Um, And I think in, like, the UK, we have just, like, British people have such a weird idea of what love should be and, like, how expressing emotions should be and, like, oh, you shouldn't need all of this. You shouldn't need to, like ask for help or like ask for reassurance or like be touchy-feely or whatever Mm. but those are things that people need so yeah you know like you need to you need to do certain things and like maybe if in that situation I had just kind of like pushed through and done it things could have been different I mean I'm not saying I think we would have we would still be together but you know like who's to say what I could have learned from myself Mm. if I had done it because I didn't do it so we'll never know (laughs) do you get what I'm saying (laughs) (laughs) like not to sound really bleak (laughs) um but yeah and I think relationships are just like as you were saying like you do learn so much about yourself and like what you can give to other people and like the patience you have for people and like the willingness of yourself in a way um yeah if you're not you <laughs> apparently. yeah apparently i have no patience or willingness to do things words for of affirmation people. i don't know about not that. for me <laughs> quality time i can do. <laughs> do is your um because another thing that i find interesting is that like how sometimes like the way we give love is just not the same as we like to receive yeah. it because like I I'm a big like um 
like um acts of service mm. person but i hate it done to me yeah. like it's not it's not the way that i personally like to receive yeah love it is interesting i think for women as well like we've been conditioned to like act in certain ways and be such like providers for people yeah. that if the f- script is flipped mm. then it can be like very confusing for us and they actually did talk about this in the study that people in relationships where the man is the anxiously attached person and the woman is the avoidantly attached person that can create more difficulties in the relationship than if it's the other way around because it's a flip on those like traditional gender Mm. stereotypes and like I definitely think that's true like avoidant women getting the ick when their boyfriends like want to do certain things for them or like constantly badgering them and it's like because we have been conditioned to think of men in a certain way and like if they don't fulfill that then Mm. it's like fuck you doing but obviously that is like an innate thing that we want is like we want our partners to be doing more housework or like doing more acts of service or whatever but maybe you just don't have the capacity to like reach that point of receiving love Mm. in a way like at a particular time I'm sure you can learn it over time (laughs) um yeah my I think it's interesting as well how your love language can be different for your friends and your relationships because like I like well and with certain friends as well because with certain friends I'm like very like hug me hug me hug me we're not like a very huggy friendship we don't really hug yeah but with some people I am like touch me (laughs) (laughs) yeah I'm very touchy like with my boyfriend that's like another one of mine no but I'm not with my boyfriend I'm yeah I'm not with partner I'm not with any of my friends yeah Yeah. only with my like I'd say the most touchy I am is with my sister Mm. other than my relation like a boyfriend or whatever yeah also okay this is sorry not even that related to love languages anymore i kind of just question um have you do you think like did you notice at all in like your relationships like were you different like do you think you're like a different kind of person depending on like who you're with Mm. or like a different I don't know, maybe depending on, like, you're, like, a different part of the dynamic, you know, the dynamic's different, so you're, like, sort of, like, fulfilling a different kind of role, or, like, yeah, just different, like, do you, did you feel like you, in a way, like, are different in different relationships? Yeah, like, do you mean enhanced or, like, worse? (laughs) (laughs) I just mean different. It's different. (laughs) I think, like, when I'm not in a relationship it's so hard for me to imagine wanting to do things for someone like in a romantic way Mm -hmm. because I don't I don't want to but then in the relationship I will just naturally do them so it is kind of showing that like capacity for love yeah but then also I do reach a limit and I do accept things that like I shouldn't so um that's something I need to work on but I definitely think I am different and but I I don't think like my values or like who I am integrally changes like I still know but I can like lose sight of it by wanting to like make the other person happy or like try to make the relationship work because like naturally all of your like not all but a lot of your attention can go into like making this relationship work especially if it's a difficult relationship Mm. it can consume so much of your energy which is like again why relationships shouldn't be difficult because like you just can't really do anything else if your relationship's difficult and that's like all you're thinking about um but yeah I don't know is that what you meant yeah no well I I meant more like in your two relationships did you think you were different but I I oh between the two I also want was wondering like whether you think you change like when you're saying yeah between my two relationships I think it's different because like one was with a girl and one was with a boy so Mm. like I don't think in a in a like same gender relationship or like me just in a relationship with anyone who isn't a man I fulfill the same like things because I'm not trying to like fulfill this ideal of a heterosexual relationship Mm. like I find it very hard to escape that with men and I do think that will like change over time but I just don't 
it's so hard for me to imagine a model of a straight relationship where like two pe- where the woman isn't fulfilling like something that they think they need to fulfill and the man isn't fulfilling something they need to fulfill and there's not that like power play right. in a way not power play but like just that imbalance you know that like tension but it's kind of hard to say because I haven't really been in like a, a good relationship <laughs> <laughs> I think the good parts of my relationship, of my two relationships, I was pretty, like, similar, I would say. Okay. In, like, how I interacted in them. Okay. Yeah. What about you? Um, I don't know. I think it's, like, really weird because I feel like I've, like, a lot of the things that I think came naturally to me or like were my idea of what a relationship is like and like the stuff that you do in a relationship is different from my first relationship to to my relationship now but I also think like the fact that we were two girls plays Mm -hmm. into it and like the fact that this is like a straight relationship plays into it and I don't know I do think this is more of a like not changing this isn't in like a changing myself for the relationship kind of way. This is, I think, more of a like me changing things because of the person that I'm dating. Yeah. Rather than like for the relationship. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, I think I don't it's know a if combination that's the same thing. of two. Yeah, I, I know yeah. what you mean. Yeah. <clears throat> but as in like, because with my ex, it's like we would do all this soppy shit and like really like cringe couple stuff and like. Not that my boyfriend and I aren't cringe and coupley as well, like in our own way, you know, but it's like mm. little things that I just would never do now, like, yeah, you know, like, but I felt like they were very much like, oh, you know, I'm just so, like, that's so what Maria's like, that's such a Maria mm. thing to do. Oh, I see, yeah, that's interesting. Um, that I just don't, and like, yeah, like, even though I said, like, acts of service is my lang- love language, like, with my ex, it was like times a hundred. Because it was, like, I don't know, there was just this, like, allowance of, like, of space to do that. And it was just, like, really extra, Yeah, I feel. Not that, I don't know, but I feel like I'm kind of saying it from a from a perspective of, like, trying to defend my relationship now. Because I don't think that there no, was I really an, necessarily even anything wrong with it at the time, like, with, in my past relationship. Like, you know, that's just the way that it was. And... Like, with my boyfriend now, I just don't do lots of things because, like, he would find it, like, cringe. Yeah, no, like... but I think it's so true, like, when so- when the other person gives you the space to do something rather than asking you to do it, you're so much more willing to do it. Like, if my boyfriend had not constantly asked me to give him words of affirmation, I probably would have done it by myself at some point. Like, I would have come to that realisation mm. and, like, recognised that that's what he needed. And that's that's a, obviously, like, a very, like, stark example. But I do think, like, if you have that space to do certain things or, like, you feel like you can, you kind of reach that, like, capacity to show things, to show love in ways that you wouldn't have thought to have before. Mm. But, yeah, because, like, I have no trouble giving words of affirmation to, like, my friends when they don't, like, ask for it, you know? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I think I'm quite, like... Like, I'll give reassurance if I feel like I should in the moment. Yeah, yeah, but And that's because there's just, like, that space there for me to do that. But, yeah, it definitely changes with, like... It changes with everyone. Everything mm. changes with everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the message of this episode. <laughs> Hope that's helpful. It's dependent on <laughs> each situation. Um, I mean, we didn't... You can't say we didn't warn you that that wasn't going to be a conclusion, so. <laughs> but, um, but, I mean, to conclude, do you, honey, do you think love should be difficult? Do you think? No. You don't think it should be, but you think it is? No. I don't think it should be. I think it can be. But, but with the right person, you don't think it is? Yeah, I'm going to say it changes from person to person because I don't subscribe to this idea of like the right person okay i think relationships like the journey of your relationships throughout time 
is going to be work. But I think maybe there will be one day where I meet someone and it's not going to be hard work and that's not because they're the right person for me or like they're the one. I just think it's because I will be like in the right time in my life where I'm willing to accept that love that they can miraculously okay. show me or that not miraculously that they are like able to show me and mm. that I'm able to receive it in that moment you know yeah I like that because I do think that I don't know at the start I was thinking that a lot of the reasons why love is difficult comes from like within rather than like from the other person mm-hmm. or external yeah. factors or the dynamic or whatever like it can just like it it can just be hard because it's like I'm putting all these like mental blocks on myself Mm -hmm. or like I'm putting all these hurdles or I'm anxiously attached so like this is such an issue when like it Mm -hmm. doesn't need to be so I yeah I completely like co-sign in a way what you're saying and that like I don't think it would be hard if like you're actually ready to be in that relationship and like receive that love as Mm -hmm. you said I like that a lot we accept the love we think we deserve. Yeah, exactly. And all that. <laughs> I mean, it's such a good quote. It really is. It's I too always think true. about that quote, you it's know? It's too true. <laughs> like my 13 year old self latching and hyperfixating <laughs> on that quote was right. Yeah, <laughs> was genuinely. right all along. That title of the episode <laughs> You accept the love you think you deserve. <laughs> Honestly. No, I mean, it is really true. Yeah. But. What do you, do you, do you kind of like agree with what I said or do you have anything to add about like, should love be difficult? No, I mean, I do agree with what you're saying. I Mm -hmm. do think that relationships will always require work as Mm -hmm. well, kind of as you said. And I do, but I do think that, no, and I also like cheekily do believe that there are just people out there that are like a lot more fit to love you than others, okay? Like, and I just don't think that people are picking the right people all the time. Yeah, that's and true. I, I don't think we know what we want. And I think that people make excuses, no, or not even excuses for people, just like there's always like, like you don't have to accept this. Like, mm-hmm. you don't have to. You can yeah. just walk away like there will be someone that will be willing to do this like if you can't find someone be willing to compromise on something or like willing to like meet you somewhere or like as in meet you halfway or like try to be willing to learn the love Mm -hmm. languages and uh, all of this stuff that we were saying like a willingness like if you don't if you don't at least have a willingness it's like you can find someone that will have that willingness because you do definitely deserve that. Yeah. Like, yeah, you don't... You, maybe not everyone just deserves someone to be, like, perfect right off the bat and know everything. Like, yeah, yeah. people will, like, need to still communicate, but you do deserve someone that's going to have that willingness. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That willingness without you also having to, like, completely change yourself. Like, yeah, just 100%. stay yourself and know what know what you're worth. Yeah. Like, what and, your yeah, worth Yeah, and th- is. that's why you need to make mistakes. Like, mm. that's why I can't comprehend how people just like date the person that they met like first time like they must be so lucky like yeah. that they were just ready and th- that that just worked for them you know like that is a blessed situation <laughs> to be in but yeah. it is important for most people to make these mistakes date people that aren't necessarily right for them because that's how you learn what you like and what you need yeah yeah, yeah. and not everyone like most people don't just know that mm. right off the bat like the second they're born <laughs> <laughs> but yeah yeah Anyway, um, next week we will have a very exciting guest. Oh yeah. It is approaching the end of the season, so for once we actually know which, yeah, for once we actually know which episodes we're releasing when, so next week we will be joined by my ex-girlfriend. Woohoo! Be We've been so very excited exciting. for this, guys. Yeah, we are so excited. Definitely tune in for that so one. stay for tuned. juicy goss. So there'll be around three episodes left and we are going to have a meetup on the 25th of June. It's going to be at Hyde Park. It's going to start at 1pm. Follow us on Instagram, all the social media to find out more details. Wear red, white and pink. Come down to make some friends, to meet us, to celebrate two years of the podcast. And yeah, more info will be at our social media, which is Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, 
I also made us a subreddit the other day. I don't know why I did that, but it's all at Sextras Podcast. Um, follow us on YouTube at Sextras Podcast. Email us sextraspodcast at gmail.com. Visit our website, sextraspodcast.com. <laughs> and I think that's it. Yeah. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. <laughs> You've been listening to Sextras, presented by Honey Jane Wyatt and Maria Jose Hayodatiyi, produced by Mabel Productions. Sex.